Hello again everybody, and I'm back with another Destiny 2 video, and today we're going to talk about this week's Nightfall weapon, which is going to be Malicious Birthright. As always, I will have timestamps with each section in the description below, as well as my Twitch channel if you ever want to see me live stream. I will be live streaming Guardian Games grinding today, trying to grind for that new scout rifle. And without wasting any more time, let's go ahead and begin. So basically, Malicious Birthright is once again going to be this week's Nightfall weapon, and this week's Nightfall is Arms Dealer, which in my opinion is one of the easier GMs this season, even after its updates. And I'm sure some of you also know that one of the strongest kinetic grenade launchers for a very long time now has been Ignition Code, since it is currently the only grenade launcher in the game that can get slide shot. Well, Malicious Birthright might just be the next best thing, since you can actually get slide ways instead of slide shot on this thing. Even though slide ways is usually considered to be an inferior perk to Slide Shot due to the different stats provided, Slide Ways and Slide Shot both have the same main effect. When you slide, it'll reload your weapon and give a stat bonus. The best roles of these GLs are basically all going to utilize either Slide Ways or Slide Shot, both for Ignition Code and Malicious Birthright. And on paper, Slide Shot and Slide Ways stat bonuses shouldn't be a big difference on a grenade launcher, and you'd be right except for a couple of things. Basically, Slide Shot grants 20 range and 30 stability, and Slide Ways grants 20 stability and 20 handling, and these stats shouldn't matter a ton on a single shot grenade launcher. However, both bonuses also last 3 seconds, the main difference being that Slide Shot's buff only applies to the first shot fired, and then can be reactivated again by sliding, while Slide Ways buff does not clear after the first shot is fired and lasts 3 seconds after you slide. And that's going to be important because after shooting with a slide shot ignition code, you can almost always immediately slide to reload again, and then you're able to chain these together because the internal cooldown of slide shot is 0.3 seconds after clearing the stat buff, and its buff again clears after one shot is fired. Slideways does have the same 0.3 seconds internal cooldown, however, because the stat buff does not clear after one shot is fired, it is effectively a 3.3 second cooldown on reloading. So once you slide to reload your malicious birthright once, you're going to be locked out of another reload for just over 3 seconds. And I'm sure the background gameplay in this video will no doubt include some times where I try and fail to reload on the slide because of these cooldowns, since Slideways is still active and giving me stats, therefore preventing my reload from going through, and it's probably going to look really awkward. Like I said, Ignition Code doesn't really have this problem, so then why am I making this video if Ignition Code is, in theory, just better? Well, I do think it's important to contextualize the amount of effort given to get Ignition Code right now versus the amount of effort required to get this role on Malicious. For Malicious Birthright, all you need to do is complete Nightfalls during the week that it's the featured weapon. And you can get a guaranteed Adept version of it with alternate perks, making the RNG even easier if you complete the Grandmaster version of the Nightfall on the week that Malicious Birthright is available. Even then, if you grind all week and don't get the roll that you want, you can focus more Ignition Codes at Commander Zavala using Vanguard Engrams, so even once the weapon is unavailable, you can still roll for it if you've received at least one before. Ignition Code, on the other hand, currently drops only from Dares of Eternity, which cycles through four different loot pools and drops one one item from the current pool on completion. Then you'll need to get Ignition Code specifically, and Dares of Eternity at any given time, the loot pool will have two sets of armor and 11 weapons. That's 21 potential drops from this activity, and you really probably only care about one of them being Ignition Code. And then you have another layer of RNG with the perks. Ignition Code has five magazine options, and you get two for a two in five chance of getting disorienting grenades, which is likely what you want. And then you need to also get Slide Shot, which is another one in six chance after getting Ignition Code to drop in the first place. The last perk I don't think matters quite as much, but let's say you do have a specific last perk that you want. That's another 1 in 6 chance that you have to deal with just to get the Ignition Code roll that you want. That is so many layers of RNG with pretty bad odds that I think it's probably worth just going for Malicious Birthright at the moment if you don't already have Ignition Code. And now that that's out of the way, I do want to talk a little bit more about Malicious specifically. Like, basically every other non-waveframe grenade launcher disorienting grenades is probably the most desirable for utility, and Spike will be what you want for damage. I personally prefer disorienting, and that's what I used for this video. Then there's the two perks. For the first column, I'd just recommend Slideways, not a whole lot else there that I think is worth it over Slideways, even with the drawbacks that I mentioned before. It's definitely a little awkward to get used to using Slideways instead of Slide Shot, but eventually you'll probably get the hang of it, and you'll be able to get your free reloads a lot more reliably. For the last perk, there's really two that I recommend, the first being Autoloading Holster, and the second one is actually a new perk called Under Over. 
For a combo using autoloading holster and slideways, you'll find an interesting cadence to your gameplay loop. Autoloading holsters basically can provide you with a decent band-aid solution to the reload lockout that I mentioned earlier with slideways. Basically, you can shoot your first grenade, then slide, then shoot another to disorient more enemies, then you can holster and switch to your energy or heavy weapon to get some free damage out for two and a half seconds until autoloading activates, then rinse and repeat with militias. It's not quite as spammable as Ignition Code, but I still think it's pretty smooth regardless. It's also basically two in the tube every single time that you shoot, because Slideways does give you that first free reload, and then you get the second reload granted by autoloading holster. It's not very often in Destiny that you see two reload perks on a weapon at the same time, and it's even rare that they're a viable combination, but I do think that Slideways autoloading holster is not a bad choice for sure when you're talking about Malicious Birthright. The other more aggressive choice is gonna be Under Over. The main reason that I think it could be pretty solid is due to the changes that came to Shields and Lightfall mainly with the removal of Match Game. Since Match Game was removed, Elemental Shields, even when not correctly matched, are a bit easier to break across the whole game than they used to be. Disorienting Grenade Launchers have been pretty good for this for a while as well, since even though they may not break the shield straight away, they do blind the target, meaning that they're basically helpless while you chip away at the shield, and each time you hit it again, they'll be re-blinded. Under Over speeds it up just a little bit, since in PvE it buffs damage to both shields and overshields. Against Elemental Shields, it's a free 10% bonus, and against Overshields, it's a free 20% bonus. And now that we have more enemy types with Overshields, specifically currently being Lucent Hive Moths and Shadow Legion Shield Generators, and I imagine in the future we will only be seeing more enemy types gain this overshield mechanic. Uh, in the limited testing that I was able to do, it seemed that you could double dip for an extra 30% damage, as long as the overshielded enemy also has an elemental shield active as well under the overshield. Since disorienting GLs virtually have no blast radius, however, you'll want direct hits, and it didn't feel too bad to use in my opinion. Now, if you don't manage to get autoloading holster or under over, there's a few perks that I think could still be pretty good. For that last column, I do think it is a tie for third between Danger Zone and Frenzy. Frenzy is going to give you a little bit more damage and more reload speed as well as some handling which helps with holster speed and draw speed, and then Danger Zone is going to reduce the self damage that you would take at close range. Normally Danger Zone would also buff the blast radius, but the perk does appear to work based on a percentage of the blast radius stat, and since disorienting grenades reduces the blast radius stat to zero, any percentage buff therefore multiplies by zero and gives no bonus, so disorienting grenades range doesn't appear to be linked to the blast radius either, so as far as I can tell, Danger Danger Zone's Blast Radius buff, if you are using Disorienting Grenades, is not going to actually give you any real bonus here, although I still think it's a good choice for one big reason, and that is the fact that it does reduce incoming damage from your own grenades by 40%, which will let you use your militias at much closer ranges, making it even stronger defensively, especially if enemies get too close. From there, I don't really think any of the other perks are super impactful, and the core perks of Slideways and Disorienting are, in my opinion, the main combo that you should care about. Anything after that is certainly a nice bonus if you get good perks, but I don't think it's make or break. Then the last thing you have on Malicious Birthright are the Origin Traits. This one has three, it has Field Test since it's technically an EDZ weapon, it also has Vanguard's Vindication and Stunning Recovery. I personally am going to recommend Field Test as that one seems to be pretty good, especially for a weapon like this where you're going to be firing a lot, getting hits, and being able to stack Field Test, although I think Stunning Recovery could be really good in content with a lot of champions. Vanguard's Vindication I think is a lot weaker since you're going to need kills and it's not necessarily something you get kills with as much as a utility weapon, so I personally I personally didn't run Vanguard's Vindication, I ran Field Test, and then during content with champions I would either keep Field Test or maybe switch to Stunning Recovery. Either one is good. However, that is all I have for y'all today, so if you did like this video, a like and share are greatly appreciated, and if you want to keep up to date on the content, subscribe is always a good way to do that. And like I said, my Twitch is linked down below, so if you want to catch some streams there, I'll be grinding some Destiny this week, so look forward to seeing you if you want to stop by. Everybody have a great rest of your day, and I'll see y'all in the next one. Later, everybody.